Assalamu alaikum everyone. So this is a video for pre-PSPM SK015 question number 5. So question number 5. An amount of 0 0.5 mole sulfuryl chloride SO2Cl2 was placed into 5 liter flask and allowed to reach equilibrium at 200 degrees Celsius as the following reaction. So you are given an equilibrium uh, equation. Okay, dan dekat sini dia bagi delta H. So, as you can see over here, okay, kita ada delta H positif dekat sini. So, this shows that the forward reaction okay, adalah endothermic reaction. So, terus label pada awak punya equation dekat sini. So, forward adalah endo. Then, reverse reaction will automatically be exothermic reaction. Okay, so look at the first question. Determine the equilibrium constant. Okay, the question is asking to find the value of Kc. For the reaction, if the equilibrium concentration of sulfur dioxide is 0 0.016 molar. Okay, so like I mentioned to you, uh, macam yang saya ajar kat dalam kelas, okay, kita asingkan kita punya maklumat kepada maklumat initial dan juga maklumat at equilibrium. Okay, so kita asingkan terlebih dahulu. So, at initial, kita ada dekat sini. So, this is the piece of information that we have. We kata, um, an amount of 0 0.5 mole of sulfur chloride SO2Cl2 is added. So, that is the initial number of mole of uh, SO2Cl2. So, kita tulis dekat sini. Okay. So, initial number of mole. Dan saya tulis juga, volume yang diberi adalah 5 liter dan temperature adalah 200 degree. Celsius. So, for question number 1 tadi, dia bagi tahu At equilibrium, concentration of SO2, sulfur dioxide, is 0 0.016 And the question is asking us, okay, what is the Kc value? Okay, so dekat sini, since kita diminta untuk cari Kc Okay, the first thing uh, that you need to do is Okay, you can write down the Kc expression Okay, KC expression awak boleh tulis berdasarkan awak punya equation dekat sini. Okay, so kita tulis bawah sikit. So, our KC expression sebab whatever it is, kita punya calculation nanti berdasarkan kita punya KC expression. So, the KC expression is concentration of the product over reactant. So, product kita SO2 times concentration, uh, concentration of Cl2. Okay. Over the concentration of SO2Cl2. Okay, so SO2Cl2 over here. Okay, so once we have the concentration terms, so ingat dekat sini, untuk cari Kc, we need all these three concentration at equilibrium. So, kalau kita tengok pada kita punya information dekat atas ni, okay, we only have uh, concentration at equilibrium untuk SO2 sahaja. Kita tak ada untuk Cl2, kita tak ada SO2Cl2. And the number of mole given untuk SO2Cl2 adalah number of mole initial. So, you cannot straight away substitute the value into the Kc expression. So, what you need to do? So, kita kena cari setiap satu concentration ni at equilibrium dan daripada mana kita nak cari, kita akan cari daripada kita punya ice table. Dan tentukan ice table awak nak pakai terms apa. So, since dekat sini kita nak cari Kc, kita akan gunakan concentration. Okay. Kenapa saya mention tentang concentration dekat sini? Okay, so this is for question number one. So, as you can see over here, the given information is number of mole of SO2Cl2. Jadi, sebelum nak masukkan nilai pada ice table, you need to make sure that you change this number of mole to concentration. So, step yang pertama dekat sini, kita kena cari dulu berapa concentration of SO2Cl2. Dan saya labelkan dekat sini, initial. Okay, jadi, concentration adalah 0.5 mole. Kita bahagikan dengan kita punya volume which is 5 liter. Okay, dan kita akan dapat the initial concentration is 0.1 molar. Okay, after that, barulah kita akan construct kita punya ice table. So, our ice table over here in concentration terms. Okay, jadi kita masukkan kita punya nilai dekat sini. So, our initial concentration of SO2Cl2 yang kita dah cari tadi is 0.1. So, initially there is no initial concentration untuk kita punya produk. So, kita letak kosong dan kosong. Okay, jadi kita tak tahu berapa banyak kita punya change. So, kita akan labelkan sebagai X 
So reactant akan digunakan untuk hasilkan produk. So kita akan letak sebagai minus x. So produk dihasilkan plus x plus x. Okay after that kat sini 0.1 minus x x dan x. Okay now. So kita dah ada dekat sini. Okay so saya highlight kan. So these are the information needed untuk kita masukkan dalam kita punya KC expression. Okay so kita boleh substitute siap-siap. Okay, jadi dekat sini, concentration of SO2 at equilibrium adalah X, Cl2 also X and untuk SO2, Cl2 adalah 0.1 minus X. Okay, please make sure even though we already know the concentration at equilibrium untuk SO2 adalah 0.016, jangan substitute nilai dekat dalam ice table. Leave your ice table in Terms of X sahaja okay, Jangan masukkan apa-apa nilai sebenar Nilai sebenar hanya pada initial sahaja okay, Yang lain pada change dan pada equilibrium Kita akan tinggalkan dalam terms of X Okay now So as you can see over here Untuk kita cari kita punya KC Kita kena cari berapa nilai X So again how are we going to find the value of X So the information that we have over here is Okay, this is the information at equilibrium concentration of SO2 is 0.016 which is the same amount as our X. So, awak kena tulis somewhere. Okay, so saya note kat sini. Okay, so saya tulis kat bawah sini. Okay, concentration of SO2 at equilibrium is 0.016 kmol and this is the value of X. So, once you have shown that This is the value of X. Barulah kita akan substitute masuk ke dalam kita punya equation dekat sini. Okay. So, kita masukkan. So, substitute masukkan nilai. Okay. Dan kira. So, this will be your KC value. 3.0476 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, awak boleh tinggalkan juga jawapan awak dalam two decimal places. Okay. Now. So, markah untuk question 5.1. Okay, kita ada dekat sini tiga markah. So, markah yang pertama awak akan dapat kalau awak construct awak punya ice table dengan betul. Dan macam yang saya beritahu tadi, mesti in X term sahaja. So, everything here will be one mark. Okay, kemudian uh, markah yang seterusnya adalah okay, bila awak substitute nilai uh, concentration at equilibrium yang betul dekat sini. Okay, so, this will be another one mark. And the final answer for the KC value. Okay, another one mark. So, three marks for this question. Okay, now moving on to the question uh, five, mostly question five, the second question. So, sketch a graph showing how the concentration of the reactant and product vary with time during the reaction uh, based on 5-1. Okay, so dekat sini. Okay, jadi kita hanya diminta untuk sketchkan graph Uh, untuk tunjukkan macam mana concentration berubah So first you need to make sure that The axis is correct So this is your axis Concentration against time okay, Jadi kita akan mulakan Dengan kita punya uh, sketching So Kita kena tengok okay, Apa concentration yang ada initially Kita kena check satu persatu So as we know over here Okay, initial concentration kita ada adalah untuk kita punya reactant which is SO2, Cl2. So, bila kita ada initial concentration maksudnya bila awak sketch it needs to start from somewhere up here lah. Okay, untuk tunjukkan yang dia ada concentration. Okay, so katakan kita set daripada sini. So, what we happen is okay, concentration of SO2, Cl2 will drop. Okay, dan pada satu tahap dia akan start constant. So, turun dekat sini menunjukkan. Okay, so awak lukis dia elok sikit lah. Okay, bagi dia smooth. Okay, so the concentration drops over here showing that SO2, Cl2 is used to produce SO2 and Cl2. Okay, dia digunakan untuk hasilkan produk. So, at the same time, kita punya produk uh, since dia daripada kosong. Okay, maksudnya initial memang tak ada langsung. So, kita kena start daripada origin, daripada kosong dekat sini. Okay, so from zero, it will slowly increase in concentration. Then at one point, dia akan constant juga dekat sini. Okay, jadi dekat sini, bentuk curve untuk atas dengan bawah ni, it should be similar. Okay, mungkin ada juga yang buat curve dia cross. 
Okay, initial uh, concentration reactant and concentration product dekat sini, dia bersilang. Tak ada masalah. Yang penting adalah bentuk dia mesti lebih kurang sama. Okay, kenapa lebih kurang sama? This is because, okay, for one mole of reactant, one mole of SO2 dan one mole of Cl2 akan terbentuk. Okay, so dekat sini, kita tak perlu lukis tiga uh, graf yang berbeza sebab for SO2 and Cl2, since Uh, dia akan terhasil satu mol satu mol saja, so the shape should be similar for SO2 and Cl2. Okay, next apa awak kena buat? Label kan pada awak punya uh, graf tadi. So for this one yang men yang menurun ni adalah untuk SO2 Cl2. Okay, dan yang menaik dekat sini kita akan tulis untuk SO2 and Cl2 like that. Okay, so After you have finished, okay, ini sahajalah awak punya graph sketching. Okay, jadi, markah dekat sini, there will be two marks. So, markah dia adalah apa? Satu dekat sini, awak tunjukkan SO2, Cl2, the curve uh, curve dia menurun. Kemudian, the constant showing that it has reached equilibrium. And another one mark is for the product. Okay, yang menunjukkan, dia mesti start daripada zero. Slowly increasing and at one point it will start constant. Okay dan dekat sini mesti ada label. Kalau ada curve tapi tak ada label, tak ada markah. Okay, so this will be for question 5-2. So the next question, by using Lee Chatelier's principle, explain what happened to the amount of sulfuryl chloride SO2, Cl2 and the Kc value when the system is cool. Okay, so dekat sini, system is cool. Kita nak tahu apa terjadi pada amount of sulfuryl chloride. So, bila dia tanya amount dekat sini, so kita terus refer kepada what is the concentration of SO2, Cl2. Kita perlu tentukan sama ada concentration dia increase ataupun decrease. Okay, kemudian the Kc value, again, kita tak perlu bagi apa-apa nilai. Kita cuma perlu bagi tahu sama ada okay, the value of Kc is it increase, decrease ataupun remain constant. Okay, salah satulah dekat sini. Okay, dan bila dia kata when the system is cool, so this is directly saying that the temperature of the system is decreased. Jadi kita buat sedikit revision untuk temperature. So as you remember, key point yang kita kena ingat untuk temperature adalah When temperature of the system increase, temperature system increase maksudnya ada banyak heat. Okay. Jadi, sistem akan pilih untuk kurangkan heat. Cara macam mana? Endothermic reaction is favored dekat sini. And if the temperature of the system decrease, maksudnya dia jadi makin sejuk, dia perlukan lebih banyak haba. So, that's why exothermic reaction is favored. Okay. Jadi, untuk tentukan kita punya... Uh, position of equilibrium, we need to check first our equation, our reaction. Is it an exothermic ataupun endothermic reaction? Okay, jadi macam mana kita nak tentukan? Kita tengok kepada kita punya delta H. Okay, sama ada dia positif ataupun delta H kita adalah negatif. Okay, apa maksud dekat sini? So, if we have delta H positif, okay, maksudnya kepada kita punya arrow dekat sini, The forward reaction is endothermic reaction. Positif dekat sini showing that it's an endothermic reaction. So, automatically the reverse reaction will be exothermic reaction. So, same goes if you have delta H negative, maksudnya kita akan ada exothermic reaction. So, meaning forward reaction adalah exothermic over here. Okay, jadi automatically the reverse reaction adalah endothermic reaction. So, position of equilibrium bergantung kepada kita punya type of reaction dekat sini. Okay, dan juga apa yang berlaku pada sistem kita sama ada temperature increase ataupun decrease. Jadi, for this question, okay, so what happened is when the system is cool, the temperature decrease. The system will favor exothermic reaction to increase the temperature. Okay, jadi dekat sini bila kita dah tentukan Sistem akan bergerak ke arah exothermic reaction. So, barulah kita akan tengok pada kita punya equation. So, exothermic reaction adalah our reverse reaction dekat sini. 
Okay, jadi apa yang akan berlaku? Equilibrium position kita tentukan dulu. Equilibrium position will shift to the left. So when it shift to the left, what happen? Concentration of reactant akan berkurang dan concentration of product akan bertambah. Equilibrium position will shift to the left. Macam kita dah tentukan tadi. Until new equilibrium is achieved. Okay, kemudian soalan tadi tanya, okay, apa berlaku pada concentration of SO2, Cl2 dan kita punya Kc? So, tadi kita dah tentukan what happen is, okay, concentration of SO2, Cl2 since equilibrium ke kiri, okay, kita boleh kata concentration dia adalah increase. Okay, untuk Kc pula, okay, macam mana kita nak tentukan sama ada Kc kita bertambah, berkurang ataupun berubah, uh, bertambah, berkurang ataupun remain constant. So first, you need to understand bila kita ber, uh, cerita tentang temperature, okay, the value of Kc will change if we change our temperature. Kalau kita ubah concentration, kita ubah partial pressure, tapi kita tak ubah temperature, the value of Kc and Kp will remain constant. Tapi kalau kita ubah temperature, tambah heat ataupun kurangkan heat, the value of Kc will decrease. Jadi macam mana kita nak tentukan sama ada dia bertambah ataupun berkurang. Okay, so one way to visualize. Okay, jadi dekat sini katakan kita punya Kc adalah tadi concentration of SO2 times concentration of Cl2 over concentration of SO2 Cl2. Okay, so what happen over here is kita dah tahu concentration of SO2 dan Cl2 akan berkurang. Okay, maksudnya value dekat sini akan jadi smaller lah. Okay, and concentration of SO2 Cl2 will increase. So kita akan ada bigger value dekat sini. Okay, jadi uh, boleh bayangkan dekat sini. So if we have a small vo uh, value divide by a big value. So what happened to the value of Kc? Jadi dekat sini kita boleh nampak the value of Kc will decrease. Jadi kita tulislah kat sini Kc decrease. So for this question, you will have four marks. Okay, marka yang pertama adalah bila awak nyatakan despite the system will favor exothermic reaction. Okay, so this will be your first mark. And then the second mark is when you mention about the position of equilibrium. Equilibrium position will shift to the left until new equilibrium achieve. So dekat sini akan ada satu marka. Okay, kemudian awak nyatakan what happened to the concentration of SO2, Cl2, another one mark. And the, concent, uh, the value of Kc decrease, another one mark. So four marks for this question. So all together for question number five, you will have nine marks. So that's all for question number five. Thank you for listening.